Welcome back to Follow the Compass North. Today I get to review the Skook Bow and Drill Kit. It comes in a nice package here. I got a little bit excited, a little bit ahead of myself, pulled it out. I've already used it a couple times. Uh, so you can see I'm not doing my general unboxing videos that I usually do. You can see it right here very clearly the three times that I've already used it. In the box as well, there's an instruction manual for stringing this. It's a neat uh, little trifold. However, the uh, bow and drill itself comes pre-strung and twisted inside the box, so you're good to go. But if you ever need to replace it or restring it, uh, you have this to fold up, throw in the bottom of your survival kit, and have for future use. Now, the tinder that, that comes with this is jute. We're very familiar with jute from previous videos. The fire piston video and the flint and steel video I used, I used jute in as well. Uh, we have multiple big pieces in here. I'm going to use a smaller piece here. And I'm going to start pulling it apart and creating a nice nest. Now this is already fairly fibrous. We're fairly good to go. Now sometimes when you order jute online or you get it from shops, it's crushed down into these little golf ball sized pieces. And you need to make sure that you're going through and opening it up or you're never gonna get a fire started with that. You need to have a good mixture of fuel and oxygen and heat in order to get that fire triangle completed as discussed in our fire triangle video. Now with jute, you do not wanna leave it out. It sucks moisture right out of the air. So you wanna put it in your Ziploc bag, close it 90%, squeeze all the air out, and finish sealing it off. Now Skook has put this in the Ziploc bag when they shipped it, so it seems like they know what they're doing. Uh, when it comes to tinders and friction fires. The three types of wood that you get with this, and I've got some jute on top now, is your softwood. This will make up your platform, your friction base. This has pre-made up divots and grooves for catching that ember or coal that we'll be producing with friction later in the video. The bow is a bamboo bow. It's strong, sturdy, lightweight, However, it is a little shorter than I would like. I would like this, instead of being 12 or 14 inches, I'd like it to be 20, so I can take longer strokes, have less pauses at the end, and just statistically have more time putting friction on my surface than this little short bow gives me. I understand that because of shipping, we need to make it a little bit smaller, but I might be replacing this myself with my own piece of wood. The 550 cord that it uses is pretty run of the mill. Uh, it looks like standard stuff. Uh, it's not got the indicator lines showing which brand it is, uh, but it looks like you could use just about anything for this. The stringing procedures, we won't go over here today. We'll go over that once this thing breaks. The spindle itself, our third piece of wood, is a hardwood. It looks like it's been turned out of basically the same piece here. The grain matches fairly well. And you have your main spindle with a large body, which is great for having a lot of leverage on the rotation. If you had a very thin spindle, you would have a problem getting it spinning because you wouldn't have a lot of rotational leverage. However, that spindle, once spinning, will spin much faster because of the gear ratio difference. The tip here is a little bit too pointed. I have worn it down so that this tip here is actually gonna touch far before this wide portion makes contact with the wood all the way through. I've noticed this because the tip punched through here and I did not burn through all of my wood, creating my last fire. We were able to still get it to go, but it was limited in how much uh, of a coal I was able to make. So I'm going to actually blunt that uh, before we start our next one here. Up top, we have my favorite piece of this, which is a lathed, thrust bearing. So this has been uh, milled down to a dowel uh, and then I added a little bit of uh, coconut grease in there to make sure that there's even less friction focusing the friction on the end. And here we have a manufactured three-part thrust bearing. These are pretty cool. There's a washer with a groove, then a set of entrapped ball bearings, and another washer with a groove. The cool thing about these is that they're meant to handle a lot of force. So when you press down on this, the friction is, uh, is almost nil. The force goes directly through the ball bearings with perfect contact from washer to washer, 
and you're able to put an incredible amount of force on this and still have very smooth operation. If I put on quite a bit there, you see it has no problem moving at all. Really cool. I wish I had thrust bearings built into all of my friction fire sets uh, because that would make a big difference out in the field. And I think this one will. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move this down as is. I'm not gonna modify it or create uh, a new bow or work with different wood. I'm gonna use the tinder that they gave me and see if we can use Skook's uh, as packaged bow and drill to create a friction fire. All right. There you have it. Bow and Drill Fire by Skook. Thank you for stopping in today. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. This is a decent kit. I might make some modifications here in the future, but otherwise I'm fairly happy with it. Thank you and have a great day.